Hello, welcome to 50 Questions Friday for July 28th of 2024. All right, good to see everybody here this morning. And again, if you are here live, please do drop your questions here in the questions tab. And the chat side is for everybody to connect here. We always have a lot of great people who can help out with clarification and answers. So um, thank you all for being here. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll start out today like we always try to start out by going into the heart space. So if you'd like to stop and take three breaths with me, we'll go into that sacred space of the heart. So just putting your attention to the physical heart where you find your light, that fire of you. Imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that energy, that light of the earth up through the feet and into the heart. The second breath is connecting with you as creator God, as soul, breathing in that light of you into the heart. And the third breath is where you breathe in the energies of earth, the energies of creation, bringing them both together within you. And then you just become that bridge, that conduit between heaven and earth. You are grounded, connected, and in the heart space. All right. So, hey there, Christine from Oz. Ray from Virginia. Glad you're here today, man. Hey, Natalia, Connie from Maine. Good to see you here today. Marsha from North Carolina. Um, so, yeah, we'll go ahead and get started with, um, I'll do some announcements here after a bit. We're going to do a meditation with the tools. So if you happen to own any tools, have some tools out here this morning. doesn't matter what one. We're just going to connect in with some new energies. So let's see. Um, hey, Samson from Cusco, Peru. OMG. Glad to hear you're in Peru today. All right. So we'll um, get started with some questions uh, from the internet. So. Here we go. Question number one about the water ring set. I have the personal set. This home set you now have appears to be different besides the sizes. Can you explain the differences between both sets energy wise? Yes. So basically we've had, um, gosh, our trios have gone through three different um, stages of development. And the first one was the harmonic creation field trio which was uh gosh the golden fire and some others and then we moved to the trio of rings which we've been at for the past couple of years which is the alchemist so basically the um the rings have tra traditionally in this last run that we've done the energetics has been the harmonizer ring the oh gosh the chalice ring for the second ring and the divine I am for that third ring. Um, and these together make up the alchemist or the wisdom energetics. So the wisdom energetics has been one of our, you know, more profound energetics. It is the one that, um, you know, they all work for water, basically the same, but the wisdom energetics is the one that is created for the releasing of the lifetimes of stuff, releasing of energies that no longer serve you or don't bring you joy so that was been the wisdom energetics now the um the home set of water rings has now moved into the newer creation field energetics which has a grounding ring in it so it has a six and a half inch grounding ring it has the seven and a half inch highest potentials ring. So the highest potentials is one that if you are caught up in everything in the mental, I tell you what, using that nothing space, um, did I say highest potentials? Nothing space. So that second ring in that trio is the nothing space. That nothing space is the one that if you have so much going on, your thoughts, you're just scattered you're so in the mind 
that nothing space is one that comes and brings you out of the mind. It gets the human to step aside, the human with all of its stuff. Um, so that nothing space in that home set is really a fantastic one. We also have the nothing space pendant and the nothing space practitioner ring. But I have a good friend who went through um, a death of a husband and that ring has been the one that's really helped her because it just kind of helps her check out. Um, if she's just so caught up in the stuff, she just sits with that ring um, and it just allows the mind to just release. Um, and then the largest ring in that home set is the, um, is the highest potentials, which is those three together. They just, they bring through such a field of peace. So that's the difference between the, the two water ring sets, the alchemist and the newer creation field. When can we expect the Hedica Garden Helpers to be back in stock and the Silver Water Ring? Gosh, Mary is our gal who does all the elemental stuff. She has been gone for a couple weeks, but she will be back next week. So next week we'll have Garden Helpers back in stock. Um, the silver for the large water rings. Gosh, we need to order silver sometime. Silver is flipping expensive. Um, and so I think we get, yeah, when we get a strand of silver to make those water rings, it's an investment. So here next week, hopefully, we will get some of that silver in for the water rings. Uh, another question. For support to plants, trees, and animals for a small land, still the harmony generator, or is there a more recent tool to consider? All right. So working with agriculture with, um, you know, especially if you have a small garden, greenhouse, things like that, you know, the seven and a half inch harmony generator is the most phenomenal one you know, traditionally for agriculture, it has a 12 mile sphere of influence. Um, it's working more with the plants, the divas of the land, um, conscious consciousness of the plants. Um, so the harmony generator, the seven and a half inch one has been, you know, the preferred one, but we also have the rainmaker. Now the rainmaker is one that's, you know, don't think of it as, Hey, I'm going to get this plate. I'm going to make it rain. The rainmaker is so much more than magnifying, attracting water. Um, it, that rainmaker plate is it's a broadcaster of energies and information. So that really is a great one. You can place it on the earth. You know, you can broadcast everything um, from supplements to pesticides to herbicides. You know, so you don't have to use the physical ones. You just put it in the center of that tool, broadcast it out. That's what they do in radionics for working with fields, crops. Um, and they have a lot of luck with it. So it's broadcasting the information. Um, that the uh, Rainmaker plate, it has about a 200-foot area that it covers. Um, so as long as your, you know, your garden space is within that 200 feet, that really is a fantastic one. And the Rainmaker is one, it's a plate. You can flip it upside down and you can charge water with it. Um, really a fantastic one for charging water. So, you know, that's the Rainmaker is one that I feel is a really beneficial one for gardens. Um, there is about a hundred dollar difference between those two tools. So let's see. Another question. Um, this question is about water. Is there any research on how the tensor rings affect water? Yes. So a tensor ring contains the highest paramagnetic value out of anything tested. That is what is bringing that high spin rate to water. That is what's structuring water. And when you structure water, you balance the pH. Water becomes lighter in weight in the lab. So the science, yes, Dancing with Water, the new science of water. We're actually in this edition, the second edition. They have done so much research with water and the tensor rings. Plus, you know, Slim Sperling has done all the research before that. So, yes, um, if you just actually check out dancingwithwater.com, uh, they have a lot of really great articles. They have some articles on tensor rings and water, but the book is fantastic. The book is 20 bucks. You can find it on their website, on our website. 
we make the water rings for them. Um, so yeah, for the science side with water, yes, there's a lot of things that are proven with that. You know, what we tell people is when you get a water ring to do a test, take two glasses of water at night, take one glass and sit it within the ring and the other glass not, the next day you can taste and feel the difference in the water, especially if it's something like tap water, something that has a lot of minerals and other things in it, you can really tell the difference in it. Um, yay, right, Anna, you got a rainmaker on the way. And yeah, you know, with the Rainmaker and working with the gardens, you know, when Slim first showed us that Rainmaker, he showed us putting a crystal quartz sphere in the center of it. Um, we use a tensor field generator. The Gaia spheres are phenomenal sitting inside of that Rainmaker. So whatever you put in there, it just helps add to the broadcast. So yeah, definitely play with broadcasting crystals and other energies with it. All right, so let's see. We have a question here. Um, if I place a few crystals in a photo of myself inside the tensor field generator, one, will the energetics of the crystals be disseminated into the environment? Two, will I get the benefits of all the crystals and of the tensor ring generator as well? So yes, again, it's it's kind of like the, the radionics concept for broadcasting energy and information. And the tensor field generators are a perfect one for that. So I've always called the tensor field generators a standalone radionics machine. Basically, yes, you've done it perfect, perfectly correct there in that you take that generator, you can write your name on there, or you can just voice into it your intentions for it to broadcast to you. But basically, it's just all about intention. Your intention is there when you write it on the paper and you put it in the generator it already knows your intention that, hey, you're gonna broadcast to me. So once you place whatever else inside of there, yes, the crystals, when you place the crystals inside of the tensor field generator, it will broadcast into that area, that same field as the generator is. So let's say you have a golden fire generator, you place that crystal inside there, it broadcasts it for five and a half miles across, two and three quarters miles out in each direction. So it's broadcasting in that vicinity. But again, if you put your name in there and you're halfway around the world, that is still going to be broadcasting that same energy and information to you no matter where you're at. You don't have to be within that area of the generator. So, yep, absolutely perfect the way you're doing that. Um, and will I get the benefits of all the crystals and the tensor ring as well? Yes, you will. Um, and especially when you are open to receiving. And that's what our meditation today is going to be about, is about truly tuning in and being open to receive these energies. Because um, the more that you tune in with the tools, the more they work and the more profound they are. All right, so we're going to go over here to questions. All right, Natalie, I'm very curious to hear your views on karma. There are a lot of people that consciously do evil stuff and they not seem to be concerned with karma. Do they know something we don't? Well, the whole concept of karma has basically been cleared off the planet years ago. You can choose to carry karma if you wish. Um, so we're going to go into a concept with mm, other people and doing evil deeds, things like that. Um, basically we live on a planet of duality. When we see things from a higher picture, we come here to have these experiences, these experiences of dark, light, gray, otherwise everything in between. So we come here, we have these experiences. The soul does not judge an experience as good, bad. The soul is always rejoicing that you are alive and having the experience. You know, for my lifetimes when I've gone through and I've brought my lifetimes back to wisdom, back to soul, I have found that the deeper, darker dive I take in a lifetime, the more light and wisdom my soul elicits from that experience. I've had some dark lifetimes on this planet as well as some 
beautiful, bright light times on this planet. As we all have, we live here in this world of duality. Now, we could really go into a lot of deep concepts, but no time. And it's really not the place. But basically, the whole thing is, is that um, it is all divine. And gosh, I, you know, <laughs> that's, that's really a tough one because, you know, there's really not anybody out there doing things to you, but yes, there's all the, the horrors and all the things in the world, but really choose what is yours. You do not have to participate. You do not have to take on and make any of that crap yours. You can sit there and look at all the horrors in the world and be like, okay, that's mine. I'm choosing that and I'm experiencing this and this is what I'm focusing on. This is my world. But you do not have to carry these things and you do a disservice to those that you try to carry these things for them. So basically, yes, there's horrors in the world, but they do not have to be yours. And you do not have to fix a dang thing. And I guess that's the biggest thing here is you don't have to fix anybody or help or heal anybody because they are going through their experiences and you have a choice whether you feel like stepping in to that mess and participating or not. But them going through their experiences, no matter how dark and horrific they are, that is for them. That's between them and their soul. It affects other people. Well, that's their choice to participate. Um, so that's how we see it and how we see karma and those things that are not so pretty and beautiful that, um, again, our soul has no judgment. Anyway, we got kind of deep there. We'll, we'll step back here. Um, JR, how is a three and a half inch harmony ring in the bundle sale on the blunder sale different from the healing hands rings? So the, the healing hands are, it's the etheric template again, the higher dimensional aspects of these tools. One, it is a different sacred measurement, the, the healing hands, but it's that's not where mm, the huge difference is. The huge difference between the harmony and the healing hands, again, is the energetics that comes through, which comes from the tools that we create here and are brought into the physical. So when we create here in that higher dimensional plane, the healing hands energy is all about connecting you with a higher aspect of you, your light. It is connecting with you as a central sun in creation and all creation is yours. So as a higher aspect of you, of your light, and it is in our modality and belief in witnessing, it is your light that does the healing, the clearing, the release work. And so the more you bring in your light, the more profound the potentials of the healing are. Um, and it gets to the core of what it is. So yeah, the healing hands are, are a bit different in their energetics. Now the, um, the, the harmony rings that we have on that bundles and blunders sale, which really is a fantastic sale. I mean, I tell you what, those rings are below what it cost us to make them all of those rings on those, on that sale. Um, cause we have those, the, we have the, the different grab bags that have like three or four or five different tools in them that are different prototypes. And some of these are really beautiful, beautiful tools. But, um, those harmony rings that are in on that sale on the blunders and bundle sale, um, you can still make a third field. You can take those two rings together because it was those harmony rings that actually was the first time that we were able to create a third field in between those two. And you don't necessarily need two rings. You can use your hand with intention of creating that field of just mirroring back that energy. And then you create a ball of energy. So, um, yeah, those harmony rings are still really phenomenal. Uh, Ray, if I choose to work with the tools as a healing practitioner, what tools would you recommend? As an energy healer, what root or healing modalities would you recommend, such as Reiki, radionics, etc., as being more effective? 
Okay, so if you're going to work with the the tools, you know, the practitioner rings are fantastic, especially if people will let you run a practitioner ring over top of them. That is so profound. Um, if if you're going to do a practice where you're not running the tensor rings around people, like, I don't know, we even have doctors that use these tools. Basically, you slip it underneath of the um, the table, of your massage table or your chair that you're working with people. Um, but yeah, the practitioner rings are fantastic. You know, the, the wands are pretty amazing, but really most practitioners that do work in person, um, again, are going to use the practitioner rings, but a lot of people use the Taurus, um, because the Taurus, if you're seeing a client in person, the person, uh, the client takes that Taurus and they'll place it on their body where it is that they'll need it. Um, the biggest thing on working with the tensor rings and clients is stepping them into that field, getting them to truly surrender into it, to truly connect. And it's it's all about holding that safe, sacred space. Um, and that's really what these tools are doing. And I tell you what, Ray, what, again, what I witnessed with my sister, which is so profound when I see her working with a client, she just comes in and embodies her light. She goes into the heart space. She just be soft. She just opens up. She allows in her light. She just stands there. And as her client steps into her field, she doesn't try to focus on the client. She focuses on embodying light. When the client comes in, they do the same. And the magic is, is that when I see the client embodying their light, holy smokes, that is where we see the repatterning of energy of creation happening right there is when my sister's holding that space and you can do that too. And that's what I'm saying is you do that too. You have that energy field of those tensor rings that also helps your client embody their light And that again, in this modality, this new paradigm is where we see the magic happening is when your client can embody their light too. Um, so what other modalities, you know, truly it, you can use any other modalities when you are working with the tools. Um, but to me, again, the, the biggest thing, cause I'm a Reiki master too, and I don't even use Reiki. I, it's just kind of a part of my field. I, I have so many different modalities but I don't really use them consciously. They're just a part of the energy, the information that my field carries. So as you learn those modalities, Reiki and such, you just carry them in your field and they become more of the toolbox of who and what you are. So then you just show up as this giant toolbox, you embody your light, you invite in your client or your friend or your family they embody their light and they can then start to choose from those different modalities and tools. Um, but yeah, any modalities you can certainly use with, um, with the rings when you're starting out to do, um, you know, some kind of modality with a person. Samson, of course, combined tools together is amazing. And I'm curious how amplified the rainmaker activator 3.0 and Gaia sphere what you think the sphere of influence would be with that combo? So when you add, um, so with a rainmaker and you add a tensor field generator that has, you know, a five and a half mile sphere of influence, it's going to help to broadcast that information, that rainmaker. So like with the rainmaker and you're using the activator 3.0, that one has a couple of different spheres of influence. It has that one really sacred space. Um, which is again, probably about 200 to 300 feet out around, um, uh, across. And then you have another sphere of influence. That's about four miles across, maybe more. And so basically you are broadcasting out that information from that rainmaker, especially in that, um, that 300 foot area, but that information is also being broadcast out in that, um, four mile area. So it's kind of the, the same as the activator that has two different 
spheres within it. It has that central one, which is so phenomenal, just potent. And then it has the other one that is still a beautiful sacred space. Um, and then adding the Gaia sphere, I just believe just brings more layers to it is, is, is what I see and feel. Um, but again, Samson, of course, and, and everybody with the tools, there is the innate sphere of influence and there is the sphere of influence when you have your attention and intentions with it. So you can take a sphere and it has a regular sphere of influence of like, let's say two city blocks. You can sit there with it and just have it in your awareness from the heart space. And you can expand this energy and cover the entire planet. And as long as your attention, your awareness is there with it, that is what it is doing. So, and again, that just goes back to us putting our awareness, our consciousness with these tools and how they can expand them. Is there a tool that a person can use for an energetic attack and dark energies? This happens during the night. She's a widow and leaves alone. Yes, the wisdom energetics is totally the way to go. Um, <clears throat> the wisdom energetics, the wisdom fields are all about the clearing of energies. Um, this can be ones that are perceived as outside of you, ghosts, waywards, other consciousness. Um, this can also be your own energies, including, you know, some of the old soul aspects coming home. Um, so when you are working with um, any of those energies, basically the wisdom, yeah, the wisdom is the way to go because again, when you're working with those energies and any of the tools, it's always about being in the heart space because when you are in the safe sacred space of the heart, you are untouchable. It keeps you out of fear. So again, whenever you do the work with anything, um, dark, the energetic attacks, all of that, you first step into your safe sacred space and you work from there. You work from that space of your light, your empowerment, not from a space of fear and survival. And I have to do this and in the more fight or flight style of energy. Um, so basically the wisdom wand is a great one. The wisdom wand's been one of my favorite and most profound tools. Um, because basically as you have this on your person, something comes up, you go into that heart space and you just make that clear conscious choice to release whatever it is. You take the breath and you release. So for a tool, the wisdom energetics is the most phenomenal. You don't necessarily need to have the tools. You know, you can go back through the 50 questions Fridays and everything is time stamped in there on YouTube. And you can find the meditations where, where we do basically any of the work with the wisdom tools. And, um, one of the really phenomenal ones that I love to teach is the soul altar, which is basically, um, and you can look back through the 50 questions Fridays, but it's just basically taking whatever the energy is because everything is energy, everything, everything. So you take whatever that situation or that issue is, you bring it, you sit it on that soul altar and you step away. And that is you releasing that experience, that energy, that no longer serves you and does not bring you joy. So you can truly release everything unless it's still serving you, but everything else you can choose whether you carry it and participate or not. Um, so yeah, the wisdom Laura is, is what I would suggest. JR, the silver creation wand seems very powerful compared to the wisdom wand and very different. Do you have any tips on using it and help to heal the body? Well, I tell you what, um, I'm not sure where my silver wand is. 
Yeah, the creation field wand, um, similar to the wisdom wand, I still don't know enough about that tool to tell you the honest truth, JR. Um, it is so profound. I know that you can do everything with the creation field wand as you can the wisdom wand. I really don't know truly how to explain how to actively use it. To me, having that creation field wand in my field, I do use it to run energy sometimes, you know, especially when I get caught in, you know, that dense form of the, the, the fear, the pain body, whatever, you know, using the wands when you're stuck in that space is phenomenal. So when, if I ever get stuck in that space of, of the pain or the fear or whatever, yeah, I just use that creation field wand, run the energy to what it is that I'm working with. And then it just starts to clear that out. Um, but yeah, I don't have any tips with using that wand except for, Yes, I do have some tips on using that wand. The The creation field wand is not one that we direct the energies with, with our human, with the mind, with our mental. It's not something that you direct energies with, direct intentions with, hey, I'm going to fix this. I want this to look a certain way. No, that is definitely not the way to utilize those, those tools because those ones, we are working with our soul and our light that has such a higher perspective and a higher view on everything that's going on where we're seeing things from this viewpoint, this vantage point here, especially if we're in more of that pain body, then we don't see things from its higher perspective, AKA higher potentials because part of that creation field one is the higher potentials energy. So to work with the higher potentials, it is something that is not within the wheelhouse of the mind. So when we work with that creation field wand and these creation fields in general, it is about truly letting go of your needs, necessities, desires, and truly just connecting with your light, your soul, and allowing in those higher potentials of creation to come in. So that's something like the exercise we're going to do here today in just a few moments. Um, Anna, I received just now the mini activator with beta coil and three quantum grid points. Any tips? Yeah, you know, I love just sitting that mini activator with the beta coil. Um, that is an amazing fun tool. I like to just sit it and leave it in the environment. It's also a fun one to work with with on the body. Um, you know, maybe placing it right underneath your bed tonight so that you are fully within that toroidal field, that, that field of that activator with beta coil. Um, in the quantum grid points, you know, gosh, the quantum grid points are phenomenal. If you're going to, you could use the triangulation grid, you know, set one in each corner of your space. Um, just using a single grid point is fantastic because when you take that single um, quantum grid point, you set it down in your space, you just have a soft intention, just an intention of what you want that space to be, whether you want the flavor of the space to be for healing, creativity, sleep, whatever. Um, so the quantum grid points are fantastic to use singly or else to create the grids with. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for you with that mini activator because that really is an amazing one. Um, another question about Brenda. She seems to be on a break. Any idea when she will come back to do appointments? Um, I had a session with her before, enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, Brenda's taken some time off, sabbatical, I guess you could call it. She has gone through such huge shifts that she's just been integrating. Um, and I'm not sure when she's coming back, but yeah, just go to her website. You can send her a message um, or an email or whatever contact she has there on her website. Um, in her website, when you go to twistedsage.com, you go to energy healing, that takes you to the elders3.com, her website. Um, yeah, I'm not sure when she's coming back to do sessions. Ray, I truly love the Ascension Chamber. How does the nine foot com pyramid compare to the Ascension Chamber besides the cost? Okay, so the nine foot pyramid versus the light chamber that you sit in, um, the light chamber where you have the giant Taurus in front of you and behind you and the large rings that you sit within. So that light chamber, um, yeah, cause that one's like 12,000, I believe in the nine foot pyramid. I, you know, yeah, yeah, that one's like a third of the price. 
So the pyramids are more in the wisdom field is the, mm, the biggest, the, the biggest thing that the pyramids work on is, is the wisdom energetics, the integration of lifetimes. So the, the pyramids, yeah, I would consider them more in the wisdom energetics, though they are beyond that, but that is the, the, the biggest main purpose of them. Then you have the chair chamber, the light chamber that you sit in, and that one is the creation field. And that one is more about just stepping aside, surrendering, and allowing your light to repattern energy differently. Everything is your energy. It repatterns creation because it brings more light and consciousness into creation. That is what the creation fields are doing, bringing more of your light and consciousness into everything. Um, and bringing light into things can be a disruptor. And that's also why we see a lot of the dark stuff and see a lot of things coming up. It's always been there. It's just that the more light we have and the more light we perceive the world with, the more light we perceive the world with, the more disruptive it can be. It's a beautiful thing. So you don't have to do a dang thing, you guys, to change this world. You just stand in your light and look and witness. Um, as the Ascended Master Tobias would stay, say, stand behind the short wall. Stand back here. You can still look at what the heck's going on out there, but you do not have to step into it. You stay separate from the muck. But when you can stay here with your light and you can witness the world, your light is changing it so much. Um, JR, which wand would you recommend for clearing someone's energy field, wisdom or creation? You know, I'd really suggest the wisdom wand um, for clearing the field. And you can the creation field wand. So the wisdom wand, it's innately within there. Um, the creation field wand, the wisdom energetic is in there, but it's it's kind of like if you've worked with the wisdom energetic for a little bit and and you're you're attuned with it you're you're attuned to it um it's a part of you then you can step in and use the creation field wand and still use and and when you use the creation field wand you're doing everything that the wisdom wand does so basically the wisdom wand isn't really bright and an innate huge part of the creation field wand. The wisdom wand is, is, is here and the creation field wand is built on top of it. So it is still a part of it, but it's not what comes through automatically. Um, it's something that can come through, but it's kind of like you have to know it. Um, and that's kind of the way it is with all the energies of the tools is you know, where we build the golden fire, everything's built on it, everything's built on the spurling tools, all of that. And you can still access them, but you have to really tune in to them to access all the tools that these are built on. But they're there. Um, are we expecting newer energetics tools with each shift? Um, yes, most definitely um, new energies every time we have a shift and that's something that we'll talk about here in just a quick moment too. Um, let's see. Ah, uh, yes. And Samson's here on the chat side. Thank you for sharing about uh, the creating of the rainmakers and in your experience with them. Cause yeah, the rainmakers are pretty phenomenal. Um, so here we go. We're going to, I'll go ahead and start with uh, some announcements and we'll get into a meditation with the tools. So um, we do have some new energies that are coming through. We placed uh, these new energies and it's expand. It's an expansive light and might just call it expansive light. It's, it's in this Gaia sphere, which we'll be releasing today. This thing is pretty amazing. Um, it's a flattened comfort grip wire. But this little Gaia sphere um, has that new light, that that new expansive light energetic in it. Um, so I had to wear this for about three weeks till I could integrate this energetic to be able to put it into the other tools. 
So it was about on solstice here a few days ago, last week that, um, Brendan and I witnessed this energetic going into all of the twisted sage tools, um, which we're going to tune into here in a moment, but the energetic, this new expansive light is in this. It is also in that one inch golden fire ring. Um, you all know that we, we were given out uh, free one inch golden fire rings with orders there for a little while. And that's because that has that new energetic in it as well. Um, because we really wanted to get that out to people because I wasn't able to put it into all the tools, just that golden fire ring and this particular sphere at the time. Um, let's see what other energetic updates have we done. Um, the alchemist halo is the, the large triquatra set of rings. Uh, those have been updated from the wisdom energetics to the creation field energetics. Um, and those you can tangibly find this energy in as well, this expansive light. So that's a great set of rings. Um, trying to think of what else. Oh yeah. The Gaia sphere, the five and a half inch Gaia sphere, the golden fire Gaia. We had quit making that one for a while just because, you know, I just felt like we were kind of surpassing the golden fire energetics with our consciousness and light. We've done some updates, two different updates, one in February and one again, just here over solstice with the golden fire to where that golden fire is really a great energy again. Um, for, for me, when you, it's always great when you're stepping in and clearing dense energies, but when you move past that, it sometimes it's not as tangible. Um, it's not as harmonious, I guess, with where you're at. So now then that golden fire is in, um, now we have that Gaia sphere re-released. It's a five and a half inch Gaia. It's always been one of my favorite sizes, twists, weights, everything. So that five and a half inch Gaia sphere and the golden fire also has this new expansive light energy. That one is just re-released as well. <clears throat> and we'll be sending out an email with some of this stuff. But um, so this new expansive light would like to walk into a meditation with this. <clears throat> so grab your tensor tools if you have them any of the tools that we've created throughout the years this new expansive light is in it so what this feel to me and to brenda it's it's not a it's not a real tangible field but it is a space where it's like more of your light more more like a transducer, more into this physical plane, into this plane. So it is bringing more of your light in. But the wondrous part about this field is how it expands your light out. Um, we've just never seen our light expand like this. So would like for you to sit with any of the tools and we're going to go into a meditation and just really try to feel into this new expansive light that is in all the tools. So closing your eyes, go into that heart space, taking that breath from earth, fully allowing yourself to just be grounded with the earth, that energy of earth enveloping every cell of your being. And then connecting with you as creator God, as the light of you as soul, breathing in that light, allowing your light, however you see and say it, to just come into every part of your body, into every cell, it is always there, but just allowing it more tangibly to flow within your body. And as you move into the heart space, to me, I see that it's just you standing there and it's your light. Your light is more fully flowing in, coming into your field. And it's an allowing, it's not a trying or a doing, it's a being soft and saying, okay, I allow in my light. And perhaps 
if you have not allowed in your light before, maybe we need to take a step back, be in the heart space, and make the choice to allow in your light. Make the choice to release all blockages between you and your light. All the old oaths, vows, contracts, promises, any of the things that you did to set up your separation from you, releasing those. And all it is is just you making that motion with the mind, saying, I release all those things that keep me separate from my light, from my soul. And just try to feel into your energy, into your light. Feel it in the body, feel it in your field. Whatever you imagine is true and real. Our imagination does not make up things that are not potentials or not a reality. So allow your imagination from the heart to see your light and to see your light expanding out into your world, into your body, into the mind, into the heart, into your family business, into your work, into your school, into your bank account. That's not what we're doing. So we're not trying to manifest, but we are bringing more of our light into everything. <sighs> yep. And be sure to take some deep breaths to keep that energy moving. Perhaps imagine any of your loved ones within these fields that have the tensor tools. Imagine that they are feeling into that field that is created with them and the tools together. And how they just work together to hold that space for more of their light. Your animals, your animals are a reflection of your consciousness. See them with more light. Your plants, your home, your car, they're all your light, your creation. Again, Allow more of your light in the higher potentials and possibilities of creation that come through your light. Allow that into your world. Beautiful. Tune into this space as often as you can. The more that you witness and allow and just be with your light flowing into your world, the more your world is going to shift and change. Truly the only change that occurs comes from the change in the amount of light. So allow your light to flow into all of your awareness, all of your creation.
beautiful. Thank you all for being here. And please do visit and stay in this space as much as you can. All right. Much love, you guys.